Oh, oops. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, there, yeah, it's the one. That's it. Guess we won the whole time. Guys, Wolf Den Podcast. Try. Guys, first, hey, try. first try every time. Perfect try. Thanks for coming, guys. Love you. Mwah. Thanks for being here, Wolf Den Podcast. Tuesday, it's time for the podcast. How you doing, Will? How's it going? I'm good. I'm actually glad you're here, and I'm glad the audience is here, because okay. I was hoping you guys can help me. Uh, I bought Oreos today. I bought Oreo Thins, because I'm an adult, and the Thins are for adults. That's I, true. That's a I'm true a be, thing. I'm going to be real. The Thins are way better. The thins are very it, good. It's it's the but, opposite of double stuffed, but they're they, I do like them more. Well, here's where I need your help because this is double stuffed thin. But isn't that just essentially regular ass Oreos? <laughs> for for the audio listeners, Wh I killed Bob. What? <laughs> Extra stuff thins. And I feel like I'm not against the more cream aspect. I just feel like this defeats the purpose That's of the, the being That's the fucking thin. stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> like, to be fair, they're still thin. Okay, the cookie's thin. The cookie is thin. The cookie's, yeah, but, I mean, you're getting dangerously close to yeah. regular ass Oreo here. You're getting dangerously close to completely defeating the entire purpose of the whole exercise. Still a good cookie. 10 out of 10 would recommend, but... You know, just be careful out there. <laughs> the, the cookie is the reason why it's better, though. The thin, because yeah. it just crumbles a lot easier. You don't have to chew it. You can just crush it with your tongue. Yeah. Good. But, yeah, no, double stuff is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but but the vanilla ones are, the vanilla wafers are the best ones. Vanilla wafer Those thins. are good, yeah. yeah. Those are top tier Oreos. Anyway, uh, is there some... While we're at the top of the show, going completely off topic, isn't there some yeah. wacky shit going on with uh, G.I. Joe pre-orders for the toys? I thought you'd be on top of that. Yeah, they've been doing it like they've been announcing a whole bunch of different Joes and then like some are going for pre-order right away. Some aren't. The big thing is that they're doing a new Sergeant Slaughter figure. And I think that goes up for pre-order tomorrow. Oh, and if it does, then I'm gonna have I'm gonna need at least an hour to make sure I get that figure because I want that figure because it's Sergeant uh, Slaughter. I never but, considered referring to them as Joes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like well, GIs, like you know. Yeah. Well, no. Every <laughs> if if you're a fan, you refer to them as Joes. I Although, know that. if you're a fan, you know that there's the Joes, the GI Joes, and then there's Cobra, the enemy. Two different figures in the in the overall franchise of G.I. Joe that should be a bigger series than it actually is. But they keep making bad movies, so what can you do? <laughs> okay, well, anyway, today on the show, we have a lot of things to talk about. We have yes. a lot of announcements that happened at uh, the Summer Games Fest, which is now what E3 is, basically. Mm -hmm. um, Xbox did a whole showcase. Sony did too. Well, that was, was that. That was the state of play from like a week ago. We covered that already. Oh, we covered. That's it. when they okay. announced Resident Evil Four. Yeah. Right. So go go watch that if you want that. Yeah. Uh, there's also some Nintendo Direct rumors because everybody else is announcing stuff. So of course Nintendo has to. Yes. Uh, Capcom had a showcase. I'm gonna move that. I'm gonna move that up. We should talk about that. Yeah. With the, with it was a the... quick showcase, but there's some things of interest. Uh, and that's most of what we're going to talk about is all these freaking game yes. announcements. Um, yes. but first, uh -oh. but first, uh oh, it's time for another installment oh, of God. Bob made a mistake on the oh, Nintendo podcast. Fuck. Here comes Will to correct it. <laughs> what have I done? Oh, okay. It's a simple one. At 57 minutes in, you said that Nintendo of America's headquarters is in Seattle, Washington. They, did they move? It's not. Oh, it's in Redmond, no, it, Washington. It's in Redmond, piss, Washington. You piss, 15 man. minutes away. Yo, 15 minutes away from Seattle. We recorded a podcast that's not going to come out for a while, but you are gonna you are gonna have a fun time with that one <laughs> because it is all Nintendo trivia. Oh, and we got it all wrong. <laughs> 
So you are going to have a fun time with that one. I've been trying to think of like new creative ways to like derail the show with this. (laughs) Yes. It won't just be in the, it won't just be in the beginning, but I, I got, We'll let it play out as the. As oh, the so I'm more on. wrong than that. There's more things no, 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 I was no. wrong about. We're, you're okay. good for now, but for the next time, I'm not gonna just derail the beginning of the show. Okay. I'm gonna sneak it in in the middle somewhere. I just splurt it out, just in the middle of yeah. a conversation, just blurt it out. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yep. what we normally do at the beginning of the show is you thank people who support us, like Spoopy Girl with 15 yeah. months, Kieran the Ram with three months. First time tuning into the podcast, excited. Well, thanks for being here. And Spoopy Girl with Get the Subs and Va- Va- Valiant Paradox with five months, Tio Kenobi with the nine months, Wahoo, nine months, Spoopy Girl gifting another sub, and Vet Press with the 33 months. Thank you, everybody, for being here and supporting us. Mm-hmm. Um,. Anyway, let's talk about Summer Game Fest. Woo! Woo! People are disappointed with Summer Games Fest so far. Uh, people miss uh, E3. They don't like how everything's spread out. Will, what do you think about that? I've been hearing not so much Summer Games Fest. People are disappointed in the Xbox uh, presentation. I guess because they didn't announce, like, uh, Next Halo or Gears or the GoldenEye uh, remastered. Everyone thought they would. Um, I just think... It doesn't carry the same pomp and circumstance that E3 did, uh-huh. but I mean, in general, there's no real difference between what happened this year and what typically happens at E3. I know, it's like just you're, not as you're going to be just as disappointed if this was E3. <laughs> I would say it's just not as uniformed, you yeah. know, because everyone's off doing their own thing rather than it being. You know, part of one big event, I guess, right. as it were. Um, but yeah, it's the same. <laughs> it's pretty much the same. I guess it's worth uh, talking about this tweet that I did that I fired out at like at like noon. Was it? No, I fired it out at eleven forty three in the morning, and then forgot that I tweeted it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said. Uh, I quoted, I miss E3, because I saw a lot of people saying that they miss E3, and I think that that's stupid. Uh, And then I said, you don't miss the event, you miss the announcements, most of which didn't even happen at the event. Like, most of which were, had nothing to do with E3, they were just during the time of E3. Yeah, most like the, uh, when people think of E3, they don't really think of like the show floor, they think of like the Microsoft conference, or the Sony conference, the Nintendo conference. And those happen the Saturday and Sunday before E3. You know, E3 starts on Monday, and that's when the press goes and, like, goes to look at all the games. That's E3. Yeah. And the, the Microsoft in particular uh, hasn't been... They dropped E3 a while ago. They they went right next door to E3 and did their own thing with, with, yeah. with, with hookers and booze. No, they... they <laughs> They 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 have their own theater that's literally next to the st- the the, the well, convention center. So they just they decided to around, do their own shit. They still did it around E3 time. Uh, Sony, on the other hand, just stopped going all together. They didn't do anything around E3 week. They didn't. Not only did they not True. have a presence on the show floor, they didn't even do a conference the past few years. True. So, yeah, and Nintendo, of course, they were there, but they stopped doing pressers. They just do the Nintendo directs. Yeah. So, so uh, w- what most people miss is is that all the announcements happened at once, and there's yeah. people who miss like the dumb shit in between announcements. <sighs> what the hell is that? What happened? Did this, are you okay? Den, Den of Geek just started talking to me. The website <laughs> just started playing some shit. It was really weird. Um, but anyway, uh, people miss the dumb shit that happens between announcements, like you know, like uh. I don't know, like, 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 like the weird wacky stuff. Like, like, I, like, I don't know, like, 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 uh, uh, Reggie coming like, out and saying he's going to kick some ass or whatever. Yeah. But like, or like ice tea coming out to play gears of war with Cliffy B. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's happening. It, it's, it's all right. It's yeah. happening now. It's Jeff Keeley. He's being awkward and weird. And that's what happened at E3. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's just happening more spread out. The actual event of E3 was bad, 
And yes. also, we can't ever forget that they doxed everybody who went. Let's not yeah. forget that. It should never happen again. They should all, they should cancel everyone from now until the end of time. Fuck those guys. Let's not forget that. It doesn't matter that yeah. you liked that Reggie said he's going to kick some ass. That was so fun. They doxed everybody. <laughs> Fuck them. Anyway. Anyway. John got the juices going on a tie race. And basically people missed the live shows. Yeah, that was not E3. Yeah. That was before E3. At the, yeah, the, that the, was... the week before E3. Those were essentially the E3 pre-shows. Yeah. So you can do that without E3. Yeah. And they are. Yeah. All, all, all of these companies figured out that they, they, they don't need E3 at all. E3 is yeah. just, a, it's, it's just a, a toxic stain on, on, the, on the industry and will be alive without them. All of these companies <laughs> will make do without them. The, the Xbox conference was essentially what they were doing when there was an E3. Like, that right. hasn't changed. So, right. well, anyway, what what announcements do we have to look forward to? Uh, this basically we had we had a lot of random announcements, but we had a whole ass Xbox showcase and a Capcom yeah. showcase, and I guess PlayStation happened a week ago. Uh, yeah. So, I put the Den of Geek article first, but I don't know if you'd rather yeah. go through the Xbox stuff first. I don't know. What would you rather do? Uh, I, I figured uh, Summer Games Fest was first before the Xbox announcements, so I just figured mm -hmm. do chronological order, but if you'd rather jump to Xbox, we could do that. Uh, let's do chronological. All right. So we start with Summer Games Fest. This was oh, right. Friday? Uh, it's been happening. I don't know. I think it started Friday, and then it's been trickling out. Yeah, well, this was the initial day. Oh, yeah, they had a big day, and people were really disappointed about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did not go the way people wanted. Which I don't understand, because they showed off some decent-looking games, including Aliens Dark Descent, and this upcoming squad-based action game from developer Tindanlos Interactive looks to offer the ultimate Aliens experience that has eluded some gamers... Uh, in recent years, what little we've seen of the game so far suggests that it might actually recreate the horror action and intensity that helped make Aliens a multi-genre classic. Of course, it's it's some of the new pieces of lore the game teases that are really intriguing. Is this uh, game so going to take is... 14 years to come out? Probably. Uh, it's Aliens with an S, so that means it's trying to be more like James Cameron's second movie, so therefore more action-focused. It's going to involve the Space Marines. And whatnot. That's cool. I I can get behind that. But the last time they tried to do that was Aliens Colonial Marines. And that game was disaster on a sandwich. Yes. Oh, <laughs> That's God. what I'm thinking of. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've never heard of this development studio before. The last few Alien games were Sega. And say what you will about Sega and, like, especially Colonial Marines. But Alien Isolation got it right. Um. And I don't know if this game will do the same. Because also, too, Aliens is one of those games that is one of those movies that every game rips off. Yeah. So is this gonna is this gonna feel like a generic uh third person sci fi shooter? Or is it gonna feel like aliens? The most notable alien ripoff. Echo the Dolphin for the Sega Dreamcast. Mm. Uh, Sega Sega Genesis. Well there was a there was a Echo the Dolphin on Dreamcast, so you're not did wrong. That, did that also rip off Alien? Probably. Uh, Bobo in the chat says, isn't it an RTS? I don't know. I learned absolutely nothing from this trailer. <laughs> I know. I think it's um, I think it's a squad shooter. Okay. Uh, next is Call of Duty. Yeah. We have a whole ass article about stuff. Call of Duty. Do you want us to do that now? Yeah, might as well. All right, Call of Duty's back. Ah, <laughs> uh, so Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two is my favorite Call of Duty, the original. Uh, yeah, well, this one's not out yet, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so we got so a maybe. proper reveal trailer, and we got more details on the game, including some details on the new Warzone that will be included with it. 
Uh, the sequel to the record-setting Call of Duty Modern Warfare is almost here. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 will kick off a new era of the franchise when it is released worldwide on Friday, October 28th. Uh, witness and experience what made Task Force 141 become the iconic and legendary squad that it is in this action when the action picks up following the harrowing and breathtaking action from Modern Warfare 2019. Developer Infinity Ward has left no stone unturned to create a, the, a new heart-pounding experience for players. Task Force 141's uh, next global campaign, immersive uh, world-class multiplayer, uh, and evolved special ops experience, all carefully crafted with gameplay and technical innovations that will introduce fans to a new era of Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty is taking the generational leap forward, ushering in a new era, and it begins with Modern Warfare 2, which leads the most ambitious rollout ever across the franchise. State of the Art experience is set to reshape and reframe the series and uh, an appeal to Call of Duty players worldwide. Uh, so yeah, it's coming out October 28th. The all-new Warzone 2.0 is also coming out later this year. We're getting a new mobile experience that will bring Warzone to phones. Oh. Um, there will it's being made with a brand new engine, uh, one unified engine across the entire franchise, beginning with Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0. Uh, Ricochet Anti-Cheat will be released on day one for both Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone. Uh, Call of Duty is coming back to Steam on PC, starting with Modern Warfare 2. That's a big deal. Wait, that's a huge uh, deal. Yeah. Okay, wait. All right, uh, so, so all right. I... So I'm excited for Warzone 2 because yes. uh, I haven't played Warzone in a while. It's mm -hmm. been a long time. Uh, coming to Steam means that there's potential that it could be on the Steam Deck, but it has anti-cheat. So yes. the Ricochet anti-cheat might make it a little harder to get it on the Steam Deck, but I bet I yeah. bet they'll... It, I bet it'll be a lot easier to get it on there than it is to get it on there right now. Um, yeah. Having a unified uh, 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 engine and having a Warzone on mobile also opens up to potential for a Switch version. If yes. it's the same game across mobile and console, then there's no reason not to put it on Switch. Yes. So that's, that is awesome news. Yeah. Uh, it's not in this article but it should be noted that not only is it coming to steam but it will be seventy dollars on steam meaning yeah. that activision is going all in on the higher price point for their game that's a new thing i think steam games are now yeah a lot of the new steam games are going to start being seventy dollars which yeah. uh it is what it is yeah uh that's, also that's too the world we live in uh, Warfare 2.0, it will not be compatible with war with the original Warfare, so you can't transfer your things over. You're essentially starting from scratch. That fucking Warfare sucks. 2 that yeah. sucks. I don't like that. I want to bring my skins over. Because you know it's going to be I, the same game. You know it's going to be the same stuff. Yeah. They say it's a new engine. It desperately needs a new engine. But you know yeah. the engine is mostly going to be a copy and paste. I've Call of Duty has been around for years, and it's been the same fucking game since the first yeah. modern warfare <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really don't even feel like reading the rest of this article because it's all like just saying all things that are in previous call of duty games <laughs> but yeah, with new we, a new engine that's that's what call of duty is i i yeah. don't care about any of that except for Warzone 2 i mean i i, I like i said that uh modern warfare 2 was mm -hmm. my favorite call of duty I am not playing it again unless I'm going to <laughs> play the multiplayer just to unlock stuff in Warzone, which is a thing that you right. can do. Um, yeah. I'm much more excited for Warzone 2 or Warzone 2.0 and right. the potential that it could work on other platforms. It, it, having Steam Deck capability is... It, it, I, it's not confirmed for Steam Deck, but it sounds like it's going to be easier to get it to work on Steam Deck. It's not yes. con confirmed for Switch, but it sounds like it's going to be easier to get it to work on Switch. Uh, yeah. It is confirmed for mobile, though. So that's good. Yeah. So that would be very good. But so they say, do they? So Modern Warfare 2 is October. Do they have a date for Warzone 2.0? Is it the same? Uh, 
I think they said I think they said later this year. Yeah, it's going to be. So they didn't specify Warzone. I'm going to assume December. It, it it usually takes them a while after the game comes out to to, yeah. to get everything going. Yeah, but I don't think you're going to be have to wait that long. I I think I I think December. And I I also think that the mobile version might even take a while after that. True. I, I think I think that uh, Modern Warfare 2.0 will come out, and then there might mm-hmm. not even be uh, we might not have a, a a mobile version for a while. Yeah, I spilled coffee on my mouse. <laughs> oh, time to buy a new mouse. Just throw that one out. It's time to throw it out. Anyway, that's my diatribe about Call of Duty. Okay. Show's over. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> next up was uh, Cuphead, the delicious last course. That is coming June 30th. We got to look at the new Cuphead DLC. Looks this, like more Cuphead. This has been coming out for years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we keep getting news about this. Yeah. Uh, what we didn't, what we don't keep getting news about, though, is Goat Simulator 3 coming out fall this year. Uh, no, you're not crazy. Coffee Stain Studios uh, has decided to skip Goat Simulator 2 and jump oh. straight to Goat Simulator 3 instead. Not only will this game offer more goat-based chaos than its beloved predecessor, but in addition to a four-player multiplayer mode, uh, means that everyone can get in on the fun. I, I was very confused because I did not know <laughs> there was a 2, and apparently there wasn't. Yeah. Nope. Uh, Very clever. I'm also confused because the YouTube account associated with this video has been terminated. So what yeah. happened? <laughs> well, what that happened? is weird because all the videos, all the videos from here, are from the Summer Games Fest YouTube channel. Right. Oh yeah. Oh, there's one IGN video. Yeah. Oh, and the Aliens one is is from that developer. Maybe this is from. Maybe the developer got deleted off YouTube. I don't know. <laughs> Very weird. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, cool. If you were happy, if you were interested in Goat Simulator, now there's a new one for all you people who I are will so s- interested. I will say the Goat Simulator 3 trailer was cool because it was a parody of Dead Island 2, the trailer for that, and that game's uh, still stuck in development hell. So, uh, Dead that. Island 2 had one of the best trailers of all time. That's probably why they did that. No, you're thinking of the first one where the girl gets thrown out the window? Yes. Dead Island 2 had a dude running with his with his headphones on and zombies were causing chaos all around him and he wasn't paying attention. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. That was an iconic one also. Yeah. Uh next up we got some more on Gotham Knights. It showed off a couple of Nightwing scenes uh, and all the costumes you can get. The costumes that are not the stock costumes look awful. <laughs> <laughs> they look terrible. <laughs> And like I know it's gonna be one of those games where like the different costumes are, give you different stats, and like it might be important to switch costumes. But oh my god, this is it's this thing with like uh, comic book video games where the costumes get over designed to the yeah. point where it's just like all a bunch of military tech. The the Injustice games are really bad at this. It's just like, why are you overcomplicating things? Nightwing is a bl- as a black leotard with a blue stripe on it that's it you don't it doesn't need to do all this other crap how do we where where are the suits i want to see the suits i think it's a little bit later oh there's robin i didn't see it in the trailer at all when i was scrolling through it are they called suits or skins what are they called i don't skins i guess news unless that wasn't the trailer but they showed it in they showed off Bad looking costumes. Uh, did they sh- were they for Nightwing? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. It. I don't think so. This is the same one. I think they. Sh- I'm not crazy. They showed <laughs> off bad costumes. I believe you. So. But yeah, I know I know what you mean when they when they say yeah. that. I mean, I liked the ones in Arkham, in the Arkham games. Yeah, those weren't bad. Ones. 
those were and even like you know the ones that were a little bit over designed were still within reason mm -hmm. these are not in reason oh there's a couple <laughs> <laughs> Gotham yeah, Knights fans true. are torn between over Batman Beyond skins. I think I think these look uh, kind of cool. <laughs> uh, these look kind of cool, Will. I don't know. They're not Batman know, Beyond man. at all. No, no. They they look like Batman from the end of Arkham Knight. Yeah, They're like scary and weird. It, it, it's more like uh, a design like early 90s computer graphics design like you know what i mean yeah 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 you like something you see on the box of a graphics card yes here's a couple yeah some of these are yeah. cool look like that one the nightwing on the left is cool no it's not no that it is, is cool. not that's i like these i think these are cool i think you're stupid <laughs> yeah i think you're stupid <laughs> Uh, I, but I, what I liked about Arkham, uh, the Arkham games, is they had like wacky suits, but they also had like really like clean and and simple ones too. Yeah, yeah. So, and they were all comic book based for the most part. These are just like let the in house artists go nuts. And yeah, I like, you know, a, like I, I like a couple of let the in house artists go nuts, you know. But you know, yeah. I also have some some well, like, ones that are grounded. Point. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, anyway. Layers of Fear, do we care? Layers of Fear. Uh, this is this is the game that Blooper Team was working on. Everyone thought they were doing Silent Hill, but no, it's another Layers of Fear game. Oh. Uh, speaking of over-designed comic book costumes, Marvel's Midnight Suns, a card-based strategy title from the team behind XCOM, uh, looks to offer a unique take on the Marvel's slightly more obscure properties. Uh, while some worried about the nature of the game's strategy action, everything we've seen so far suggests it could be something special. Um, Marvel XCOM, that's basically what this game is. It's... I didn't know it was card-based. Yeah, me neither. I thought it was just, like, strategy. I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's the occult, so cards, tarot cards. What I don't understand is, well, I do understand it, Marvel's the Midnight Suns is a very obscure group in the Marvel universe. They don't even like feature very frequently. I think they had like one or two comic series and that was it. Um, but now they made a whole game out of it. But the Midnight Suns were all the occult superheroes. So like Ghost Rider, Doctor Strange and characters like that. Uh, this game's got Spider-Man and Wolverine <laughs> and Iron Man and Captain America in it, in addition to Doctor Strange and Blade and Ghost Rider and all that. So, I I know why they're there. You're more likely to buy a game with Spider-Man on the cover than you right. are a game with Ghost Rider on the cover. Um, yeah, I just feel like, I don't know. This, this is a weird one. This is a weird one. Why? I don't know if I can, yeah. Why, who is the symbiote man? Uh, that's Venom. I Why he looking like that? I believe they're trying to show in the trailer the villain of the game is like capturing different heroes and villains and like twisting them for her will. Uh, if you play the trailer, if you play the trailer a little bit longer, the Hulk shows up. Okay, so it's actually Eddie Brock Venom. Oh, there's the Hulk. I literally had yeah. to play it for two seconds. Oh yeah, he's like demified. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I, oh, that's, look, that not... explains why these other characters would be involved. Because it's like, hey, yeah. we got a demon Venom, Spider-Man. We need you to yeah. fight your villain. So I'm, I'm not saying the game is going to be good or bad. I mean, XCOM is not my wheelhouse, so I can't tell you. Um, I just think the concept is, is strange. <laughs> also, Ghost Rider looks ridiculous. If you're talking about like uh, over-designed costumes, why he looking like that? See, so that's the Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider, the more recent Ghost Rider who drives oh. a car. Um, uh, yeah, his skull is a weird looking skull. Because, like, Johnny Blaze weird, yeah. and Danny Ketch have, like, regular skulls. He's got this, like, weird. And I thought it was just the artist's rendition. No, that, that becomes, like, his skull when, uh, no matter what artist is doing it. Like, cybernetic? <sighs> Not so much cybernetic, it just it doesn't look like a skull. Uh, it looks like an artist's rendition of a skull. I'm being told we pronounce symbiote wrong. 
Uh, we don't. <laughs> Who's who? Who pronounces it differently? I I know I don't think it's in the movie proper, but I remember when Venom was coming out. Yeah, Jenny Slate Jenny Slate kept pronouncing it symbiote. Yes, I do but remember I'm that. Sure they, I think they changed that for the final film. I think they call them symbiotes. Uh, yeah, I remember it, it's always been symbiote. <laughs> yeah, look at how it's spelt even. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that a free to play game? No. No. Yeah, I gotta pay for that? <laughs> yeah, it'll be a full price game uh, coming to all platforms. Uh, anyway. Uh, One Piece! Fred! Oh boy! Fred! Where you at, Fred? Uh, apparently, this One Piece Odyssey is not just for fans. The title's beautiful visuals and traditional JRPG turn-based gameplay I'd make it one of the most exciting RPGs of 2022. Well, okay. Is it going to be 1,000 hours long? Probably. Is there an inch of is 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 there an inch of gameplay in this trailer? Probably not. <laughs> there is. There is literally like an inch of gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it looks like Monster Hunter. It looks exactly like Monster Hunter. Yeah. Not Monster Hunter. Uh Dragon Quest is the game I was thinking of. Yes. It looks like Dragon yes. Quest. Yes. Definitely a Dragon Quest vibe. All right. Uh, we got routine. Uh, f- do I- first, uh, first revealed over a decade ago. Routine is a sci-fi horror game built around stealth, hacking, and good old-fashioned running for your life. While we still don't have a release date for this game, uh, there are some signs that you might actually get to play this uh, sometime this year. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, weird. Never yeah. heard of that game before in my life. And I was over a decade it's been ago. Been in development for ten years. Jesus Christ. Pimer in the chat says, "In the nineties, I always heard it. Sim, be it, <laughs> <laughs> which cannot be correct. <laughs> no. Uh, Stormgate. Okay, okay. Uh, sci-fi RTS from some of the minds behind the Starcraft series. Okay." So 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 here's here's the thing I'm gonna say now about all of these announcements. I said this about the Xbox announcement because people were disappointed about all these announcements. Yeah. These games are gorgeous looking, and there's a lot of there's gonna be a lot of depth and a lot of stuff in these games. The problem is there's so many great games that <laughs> I just I'm completely jaded, and they're all they all look the same to me. I'm, yeah, I'm, my eyes just gloss over. And yeah. uh, I, I, I have no respect anymore, I guess. <laughs> I think it, this is interesting because it's from people who made the original StarCraft. So if you're looking for something StarCrafty that isn't made by Blizzard, this might be up your alley. But okay. other than that, I got nothing for you. Yeah. But that, that like, like, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to the Xbox stuff. But yeah, uh, there were a lot of games that looked really good. But they look like games I've played already that are yeah. probably better. So, <laughs> anyway, here's a game anyway. that we are actually excited for. Yes, Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. We got a release date. It's this Thursday, June 16th. <gasps> Whoa. Uh, we got uh, finally they revealed Casey Jones is going to be a playable character. Obviously, I don't know why they took him so long. Uh-huh. And it will feature six player co op. The, I feel That's like that cool. leaves room for two more characters. Well, they, say they announced the Turtles. Mm-hmm. Uh, April, Casey, that's six. And then Splinter is seven. Yeah. Oh, Splinter is seven? Yeah. Oh, so six. Oh, that's... Never mind. I take it back. Six player yeah. co-op. Uh, why six then? Yeah. Why well, stop you want at a six? Nice, a nice even number. I mean, I'm sure there's Eight. other trying to think of like other characters from this era of the turtle specifically that they could throw in there that you can nah, play do the girl from the live action one <laughs> the fifth turtle they brought her back in the IDW comics she's like a weird like Frankenstein creature oh but okay it's, it's her yeah okay weird um I mean there's uh Mondo Gecko and the punk, punk frogs there's Mona Lisa there's 
uh, Usagi Yojimbo. There's plenty of characters you can throw in there. Usagi Yojimbo would be sick. That would be awesome. That's a good uh, DLC yeah. character. Yeah. Uh, what about the... Wasn't there a turtle that's like an amalgamation of all of them? Or is it Raphael after all the rest of them have died? <laughs> uh, so you're thinking of the last Ronin. Okay. And I don't want to spoil it, but I will say it's not Raphael. <laughs> Oh, okay. I thought it was. I thought it was him. No. And they all, the rest of them died, and he was just, he just took on all of their stuff. Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin is about, like, it's the future, and all of the turtles have died except one. And, like, Mm -hmm. he's, like, wandering, like, a cyberpunk future, trying to finally end the, uh, the Oroku Saki bloodline once and for all. Is it a big Um, reveal who, which turtle he is? Yeah. Oh. And it's a reveal in the first issue, but. I highly recommend you guys read it because it is excellent and I don't want to spoil it. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Uh does it have cross platform? I don't know. I really hope it does though. Yeah, that would that'd be so nice. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be on Game Pass day oh, one. That's so incredible. That cool. Yeah. Uh PC Game Pass? Mm, I don't know. It's just I think it's just uh Xbox Game Pass. That doesn't help. <laughs> that doesn't help. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's this Thursday, so that'll be good. But yeah, if it has cross-platform, that'd be sick. Anyway. Uh, next news, we have the Callisto Protocol, which people are excited for. Yes. Uh, uh, they showed this was just announced, the, right? At the Well, it was announced a while ago. They showed off some of this at the State of Play. Okay. I feel like um, I've heard this name before. Yeah, uh, for those of you who need a refresher, it's basically the creator of Dead Space. It's his spiritual successor to Dead Space. Okay. Yeah, and it and it looks exactly. It looks like, like Dead, Dead Space. Space. Oh. I saw this and I was like, "Oh, the new Dead Space!" And at the end, the Callisto yeah. Protocol. I was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is um, imagine Igarashi going off to make Bloodstain because he's not making Castlevania anymore. That's what this is. Mm-hmm. So. But it looks good. I would definitely play this. I never finished Dead Space 1, but I liked what I was playing of it. So, there you go. It, yeah, this looks exactly like Dead Space. Yeah. So, I mean, whatever Sony's working on... Sony is the one who is working on the next Dead Space, right? EA. EA. Oh, EA yeah. uh, took the license, basically. Well, EA, uh, EA always owned Dead Space. Uh-huh. Yeah, so Dead Space has always been an EA franchise... But EA essentially ran that franchise into the ground because they didn't know how to do it. Um, So the creator left to go do the Callisto Protocol. And now EA's like, hey, horror games are popular again. Do we own a horror franchise? (laughs) Oh, we do. Let's make a horror game. Uh, Yeah, so... They're they're doing more Dead Space stuff, but the, if you are an actual Dead Space fan, this is probably the one you should be more interested in. Exactly, exactly. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, The Last of Us Part One. <laughs> yes, uh, September second release date. Uh, also coming to PC at a later date. Um, this is the PS Five Last of Us remake that uh, has been rumored and that we've reported on before. Uh, It's real and it's coming. Uh, It's going to coincide with the release of the HBO show. Um, So you look at the trailer, it it doesn't look like a remake remake in a sense of like the Resident Evil 2 remake or the Final Fantasy 7 remake. This looks more along the lines of like the Demon's Souls remake where it's the same game. They just rebuilt it from the ground up for a new system. And so the art direction may be a little different and they might have like a lot of quality of life tweaks to it. Um, But it looks like the exact same game. So it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's still bad that it's a full $70 game. And if you want it, you have to buy the game again. They won't just give you an up an update for The Last of Us Remastered that you already own on PS4. That's the thing. They said that it's... I mean, I mean, they show you side by side and they make it seem like, whoa, look at how great this looks. It looks the same. I know. <laughs> uh, the characters are like a little different looking, but for the most part, yeah. it looks the same. And yeah. uh, they said it's a full ground-up remake 
in everything. Yeah, I th- I think they put it in the new engine or something. But uh, yeah, no, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Like I, it, I don't think we needed this at all. No, I mean, there's. I saw somebody tweet how they, uh, I guess they're like a Last of Us two speedrunner or something, and they didn't want to touch the Last of Us one because they're too used to the Last of Us two combat. So this is good for them because apparently, it's that different. The the way the two games control, and I understand the Last of Us one was what eight years ago, so like that was kind of a long time ago, and. uh, Eight years is a long time. You're going to have new people who haven't played The Last of Us. So people, yeah. it came out on PlayStation 3. So updating it for PlayStation 5, I understand a little bit. But I really was... I didn't think it needed any touching at all. It's. It, I thought The Last of Us 1 was a masterpiece when it came out. And I thought it had legs, but maybe it doesn't. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't played it in I mean, eight years. I understand. But. I understand updating the graphics, like updating it visually to make it more in line with what modern games are. I also understand like updating the controls and the overall quality of life improvements to the game. That makes sense. What doesn't make sense? What well, What doesn't make sense to me is why this couldn't have just been a patch to the currently existing game. Why yeah. are you creating a brand new game, wasting Naughty Dog's time and money to make a brand new game in the hopes that, you know, people who are just now watching this HBO show are going to be like, huh, The Last of Us, this is a video game? I want to play this game. Oh, it's $70? Hmm, I don't know if I want to spend $70 for a video game. I could just spend $20 on the version that came out <laughs> 10 years ago. Just that, do that. I, that's what it is. It's the hopes that people who see the show if the show's popular enough they'll buy the game yeah. but uh i mean that, that's hoping the show is that good um i mean it, it kind of just looks like, like 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 normally companies do this developers do this when they want to try to uh test things out on new hardware so that yeah. their next game could be even better uh, they take what they have already and they adapt it to the new hardware so that then they can learn the new hardware and f- and figure out what, what else they need to do for the next game. Um, this seems just like The Last of Us 2, though. So that it, it's like they're... I mean, I guess they're adapting to the new hardware because uh, Last yeah. of Us 2 was for PS4, but it doesn't look that different. I think I think we're just... The new hardware is just not different enough from the old hardware. So yeah. so it's getting the, the gap is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. It just it like like I don't know. It 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 kind of makes sense, but then you look at it and you're like, I don't even I don't think we needed this. It doesn't make it doesn't no. make sense when you see it. <laughs> yeah. I I this really could have been a patch. More so yeah. than the Resident Evil 4 remake, this could have been a patch. The Resident Evil 4 remake is a it looks like a completely different game. Yes. This doesn't. The yeah. e- even even The Last of Us to The Last of Us remake looked like a bigger jump than this. Yeah. Cuz you could see Joel's teeth. That was like a whole yeah. thing. And they were nice and shiny. Yeah, this this seems this this seemed weird when I saw it, but yeah. I mean, if you just hear about it, it kind of makes sense. But then you look at the difference and you're like, what? I didn't need yeah. that. <laughs> anyway, what's Witchfire? I don't, I've never heard of this. Uh, oh, it's a PC game. That's why. PC game. Uh, oh. It's from some of the minds behind Painkiller and Bulletstorm. Oh, it actually looks kind of sick. Oh, that could be, that could be cool. It, it actually looks really cool. Yeah, I would play this. It looks like an old school uh, PC shooter. Yeah, with modern graphics, obviously, it looks like a Doom or a Quake. Yeah. yeah, I would, I would definitely play this game if it came to a console. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, and that's really it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, except for the whole ass, uh, but that's the showcase, an Xbox showcase. Yes. Well, this is it for the Summer Games Fest live stream. Right. So we can move on to Bethesda and Xbox next. Uh, Overall, it's okay. (laughs) You have two articles. Which one? I have the official Microsoft news article, and then I have Polygon's. Xbox always goes into too much detail. 
ah, okay. on their official site. So I, I threw the Polygon one in case we want to keep it short. Well, we'll do Polygon. We're doing Polygon. Okay. All right. Uh, so the show started off with Redfall. It actually, I think, I think it ended with Redfall. No, it ended with Starfield. Oh, you know what? I I looked at a different article that ended with Redfall. <laughs> okay, that's what that's what it was. <laughs> well, they're both Bethesda games, and they both got delayed. So, right. uh, but first they shot it off with a uh, Redfall, which is uh, Arcane Austin's uh, Left for Dead ripoff. It it, it it I'm I'm not. Uh, yeah, it looks like Left for Dead. It's, it's Left for Dead, but but with combat. Vampires. With the combat yeah. of of a of a freaking uh, arcane game, yeah. I mean, it's weird that like we're in, we're now in like a, a renaissance of Left 4 Dead style games. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if this is going to have anything to separate it, truly separate from like Back for Blood or Left 4 Dead proper, even. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that interested in this. Yeah. Uh, um, what what was very surprising was Hollow Knight. Uh, yes, I Hollow don't Knight's... think I was expecting that in an Xbox showcase. Hollow Knight Silk Song. It's uh it's coming to Game Pass day one, but no release date yet. So the fact that there's no release date uh leads speculation that in the Nintendo Direct or something there will be a release date. Right. This was the top post on the nintendo subreddit the friggin <laughs> xbox trailer for silk soul right so I, it's I a guess big deal really it's people associated with nintendo more so than they do xbox they do that's why this was really bizarre but i guess they had a good deal to get it on game pass and yeah. and that's great so you don't gotta play yeah. it on your switch you can play it for your game pass subscription mm-hmm. uh and it looks great yeah. So I will give it a shot. Maybe I'll give it a shot on Xbox first. Yeah. Uh, next is High on Life, which is Justin Roiland's game. Yes, the creator of Rick and Morty has a new game coming out, and it looks funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it 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 it's it, he's made games before, and they're pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. This this is like his possibly like his biggest game yet because it's full 3D. It's like mm-hmm. looks like open world. I can hear JB Smoove, so he's got like yeah. some quality voice actors in there. <laughs> I heard that. I was like, "Wait, really? Did they really get JB yeah. Smoove?" So the guns uh, talk to you. Uh, yeah. I the art. I don't like how gross everything looks. Everything looks so gross. I don't like it. <laughs> I feel like that's become his niche, though. Mm-hmm. Like gross well, stuff. So- well, like Rick and Morty. There's like gross things in it, but the whole thing doesn't gross me out. Like all, yeah. ev- you have a gun staring at it's it's mouth and eyes are staring at you in the face the whole game i don't like it <laughs> it kind of reminds me of odd world stranger's wrath where like yeah your weapons all have like we all like different animals and they looked at you and they would talk to you sometimes i don't like that yeah but uh, but i just but, the, i just saw the part where he stabs the guy in the eye i forgot that happens oh, that out. that i do like the knife the knife was funny yeah but uh, I feel like this could get very annoying having the guns talk to you the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if there's voice lines that repeat over and over again. Yeah. But I'm sure it'll be funny. It looks it looks it looks pretty good. I'm just grossed out by a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> now this is good news to me. Uh Riot Games is now compatible with Game Pass. Now yes, a lot of Riot uh, Games' stuff is free to play, but uh, like for example, in Valorant, you can either uh, grind to unlock all of the characters, or you can just flat out purchase them. Yes, purchase all the characters. Now all of the characters will be unlocked if you have Game Pass. Yes, uh, League of Legends all champions unlocked. League of Legends uh, Wild Rift all champions unlocked. Uh, Legends of Runeterra. Uh, all foundation sets unlocked, ty- uh, team fight tactics, select little legends unlocked, and Valorant all agents are unlocked. So basically, if you play a if you play a Riot game and you have Game Pass, you get everything. You don't have to grind or buy anything. Yeah, uh, but it's not happening till October, which yes. is a little unfortunate. But uh, there's other things like in Valorant, uh, they had some like. Uh, the 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 Twitch Prime loot. So if you had like Amazon Prime, you can like 
connect it and you get some free loot yeah. in the game. There'll probably be some loot like that. Maybe connect your Game Pass account and you get like a little trinket in the game, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've I've become a little addicted to some of the nice skins. I've spent a, I've 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 done the microtransactions in Valorant. They've gotten me. Oh no! Uh, oh so no! I'm, I'm I'm into that. I'm into that shit. Anyway, next game is one of those games that I think looks like the other AAA games that I've seen. Uh, yeah. So a Plague Tale Requiem. This is um. This actually looks very cool, but as you said, it looks like a lot of other games. It's a stealth action game. You're a brother and sister in the dark ages. You're trying to avoid people and also plague rats because you don't want to get the plague. Oh, I didn't know it was stealth, but that makes sense. Yeah. I was going to say it looks like God of War, but uh, I guess more stealth. And yeah. I like stealth games. Yeah. Uh, I've heard people really like the first uh, a Plague Tale game. It was like a sleeper hit. So I'm interested to see how this game shapes up to be. I didn't know there was a first game. Yeah, I forgot what the first game's called, but that was like pretty popular with people. Um, it's coming to Game Pass Day One, so you can give it a try. Uh, well, now that I know it's a stealth game, maybe I'll like it. But uh, yeah, hey, Game Pass Day One. Nah, I don't, I don't know if I'll play it. There's too many free <laughs> games out right now. Yeah. Uh, next is Forza Motorsport. Now everybody's talking about how great this game looks. And every time a, a a car game comes out, it always looks great. Yeah. Um, I mean, it has been a while since we got proper Forza Motorsport since they've been working on the Forza Horizon series for the most part. Um, I mean, it does look very good. Uh, there's no there's no denying that. It does look very good. Yes. Uh, but it also looks like it's always looked. <laughs> so so. I talked about this on stream the other day and I brought up the trailer for Forza Motorsport 7, which released in 2017 and also right. had 4K footage. And it also looks beautiful. <laughs> like if you showed me this trailer and said it was the new Forza, I would be like, okay. Yeah. Like it looks just as good. The only difference is the foliage. They're, they're, they're purposely leaving out a lot of the foliage in this yeah. trailer. Because uh, this one had like some crazy foliage going on. Um, but yeah, it looks great. I, yeah. d- I don't know if this article has it, but there's also uh, oh here, yeah, it does. Never mind. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. All right. <laughs> I'm not gonna go far ahead. Forza Motorsport looks good. I like Forza. It looks good. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is getting uh, content in celebration of the franchise's 40th anniversary. I did not know this series was that old. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the first flight simulator like then? If it's 40 years old, I know I'm trying to look that up now. Um, one of the things that's getting is, uh, halo ships. Yeah. That's the big reveal at the end. Everybody was like, wait till, till you finish make sure you finish this trailer wait for the big reveal yeah and then yeah there's a freaking halo ship and it's in space and i'm like what they added space to the game and then you yeah. i i watched somebody play it and you can't really go to space yeah like like it looks like he's in the trailer you're higher than than you're supposed to be in in the game mm-hmm. uh and it has like a cap and it kind of glitches when you go too high the uh, first flight simulator came out in 82 1982 and it looked like this yeah i didn't i didn't know that that's crazy <laughs> yeah i guess it came out for dos was dos a thing yeah dos was a thing that's crazy yeah unbelievable you think unbelievable. you know unbelievable overwatch 2 is coming to game pass that's pretty crazy and it'll be free to play oh yeah well that never yeah. mind that's not that crazy is coming to Game Pass because it's freaking free to play. Well, what do we do? We get anything for being in Game Pass? I don't, is it coming to Game Pass or is it just coming to Xbox? It's just coming to Xbox. I made up the Game Pass thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Overwatch 2 will be free to play like it probably always should have been. Um, if you like Overwatch 1, you'll like this because it's the exact same game. <laughs> so apparently there's a single player, which is going to be probably paid. Right. So uh, that's probably where they'll why that's probably why this is free to play. Also, yeah, people probably 
aren't too jazzed about this game because it looks identical to the original I know. Overwatch. <laughs> I know. We were just talking about how Forza, new the new Forza looks exactly like the old Forza. Mm-hmm. At, at least there was a gap between old Forza and new Forza. There wasn't much of a gap between this. And no, Overwatch. this this looks you know it looks like the same friggin' game. Like 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 they you've seen the comparisons. It's basically like all the yeah. all the ma- it has the exact same maps. They're just mm-hmm. day night f- at night. Flipped. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I I I mean, it's free to play, so I guess I'll play it wherever I feel like it. Probably. Yeah. Now that I've been playing Valorant on PC, I guess I'll be playing this on PC. I like the original Overwatch. I might like this. Yeah. Uh, next we have Aura. Is this like Aura a? Is-, is this like a Age of Empires situation? Yeah, it's like a real time strategy game. So we will not be playing that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I used uh, to play Age then- of Empires. I played it once. Didn't really know what I was doing in it. Never played it again. I played it a bunch and never knew what I was doing in it. <laughs> Elder Scrolls Online, we don't need to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fallout 76, we also don't need to talk about. Correct. Uh, Forza Horizon 5, it's getting Hot Wheels tracks, baby. This actually looks sick. I'm actually Big excited for this. Loops. Yeah. I want to try this. This looks really yeah. cool. It, it looks like the, the creator levels in Grand Theft Auto. Yes. But Hot Wheels. So yeah. I'm and actually I think some Hot Wheels cars too. That'll be fun. Yeah. No, it has Hot Wheels yeah. cars for sure. It, yeah. it, Forza Horizon's really good. So uh yeah. this I I'm I'm actually gonna play this. This looks really cool. <laughs> we got Vin Diesel's game. Arc two. Uh Arc, you know, the Arc survival game was very popular, and now we're getting a sequel that's been a uh, diesel fied for your enjoyment. I don't know how I don't know how he's going to improve this game, but we'll see. Or how he's going to be in it, because like it's a yeah. multiplayer game, isn't it? Also, there's also. this has been announced for a while. Zero gameplay. There's still zero yeah. gameplay being shown. Yeah. Also, we didn't mention, but everything they they said everything in the Xbox announcement will be playable. A bot. Uh, I. I heard them say everything will be playable by the end of 2023. But yeah. some people were saying that they said within 12 months. Yeah, they said within 12 months. Okay. I didn't so. see that written, so I, I don't I don't believe yeah, anything. They, they started the, the chat. They started the uh the conference <laughs> by saying uh all the games we're announcing today are gonna be playable within the next 12 months. That's crazy. Yeah. And that means Silk Song will be playable within yeah. the next 12 months, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh Scorn. Uh, it looks like a very gross horror game with a lot of HR Geiger looking. Oh yeah. Imagery. Isn't there a game called Scorn? Is it the the VR game where you like are a gladiator and there's like a lot of uh, brutality in it? Ah, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to find it now. No, I, I look up Scorn and I just get this game. Yeah, same. What's that VR game I'm thinking of? VR Gladiator game. Gorn. Gorn. <laughs> it's called Gorn. That's it a is. that's a bad name. <laughs> yeah, Scorn looks gross. I'm not playing that. Uh yeah. Flintlock Siege of Dawn. This is another sort of God of War looking game. Okay, so had I if I didn't see a Plague Tale, I would mm-hmm. think this game looks good. And if I didn't <laughs> see this game, I would think a Plague Tale looked good. But I saw both of these games, and they look kind of similar, even though I know they're different. So now I'm sad, and I'm confused, and don't know what to do. It, it looks like God of War and Assassin's Creed, and the other game looked like yeah. God of War and Assassin's Creed. So Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, you have a gun. So that's kind of cool. Like a, yeah, like a guns flint, are cool. A flint. Flintlock, yeah. Flintlock gun. Uh, you also have a little fox guy. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a great game. It's just, I I feel like completely jaded by all of these AAA games because they, they, yeah. they all kind of bleed together. This also kind of looks like uh, that PlayStation exclusive for Spoken. 
because of all of the particle effects that are happening. Yes, yes. Uh, but this looks a little more fleshed out than that game. Yeah, <laughs> that game had looked like it had like empty environments and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the game looks good. I just uh, again, I'm jaded. Uh, yeah. Minecraft Legends, a new Minecraft game. Wow, this is a strategy spinoff to regular ass Minecraft. Really? So, I I thought this was. I heard Warhammer and Dynasty Warriors. That's what I heard. I mean, Warhammer's a strategy game, so that makes but, sense. But it's like a, it's like a, it looks like a sort of like Pikmin style where you have like all. It's like an action game, but you have all of these guys that you kind of command. An action strategy, if you will. There you go. That I like that better. Yeah. So cool. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a Minecraft guy, but uh, if but, you're interested in the world of Minecraft, here you go. But are people, because like, do people play Minecraft like for reasons other than like building stuff? Because there I, was Minecraft Dungeons, which didn't well, have building stuff. And I don't think people like that very much. I accidentally played the intro again. <laughs> um, I feel like there's a generation that we missed that uh is that you know grew up when minecraft was so popular they spent a lot of time in it and then the lore developed around them and they discovered a lot of the lore and now yeah. they might be interested in stuff like this I get so it. i just that's not us we we, we didn't yeah. we didn't hit that like like imagine playing mine Ooh, all the lights just did a thing um <laughs> imagine playing minecraft and then all of a sudden like the ether gets unlocked like that didn't come with the game you know like right. you, all of a sudden hell is a thing in the game like yeah uh then you discover all this new stuff as you play the game so like i feel like if you grew up with all that uh maybe you'd be interested in something like this i don't know yeah here's another game called Lightyear frontier which doesn't look that good <laughs> it's a farming simulator with mechs. <laughs> Squid Vorp says, do you mean nether? Uh, see, that's what I mean. We're not Minecraft people. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I'm not interested in a farming simulator. Here's Gunfire yeah. Reborn. Yeah. It's coming to Game Pass, baby. This looks weird. This looks like yeah. a... I don't know, like a, like a serious Sam, but like for kids i don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> weirded out by it yeah four player co-op i don't know i don't know maybe it's a fun game to play with your friends yeah. i mean with your with your kids yeah anyway uh this one looks actually really good the case of benedict fox uh a game about a detective and a demon coming in 2023 yeah it looked um was this side scrolling i don't remember yes Yes. So it's a side scroller that's kind of like, uh, what's the genre you call this? Uh, uh, somebody in the chat called it something. Not Metroidvania. No, no. <laughs> uh, it looks really cool. It's, it's, it's a. I've, I've seen people talk about like uh, games like this, like side scrolling platformers that are. Trying to be like Limbo. Yeah. Limbo-like, if you will. And I'm getting big Limbo vibes from this. But there's a lot more action in it. Like you're like you're yeah. in Limbo, you're like kind of yeah, yeah. helpless. In this, there's like yeah. you're you're at, you've actually got some stuff going on. Yeah. Um looks cool though. I, I I'm I'm yeah. interested in it. Uh, uh anyway. next is as as Dusk Falls, a branching game about family secrets launching July 19th. It can be played solo or with up to eight players. Um, I don't remember. Is this the game that looked like a weird storybook? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no. I don't know if I'll be into this. Yeah, it's a because weird it look, art style. Like, like it's kind of it cool, like but, but then you realize that they're all like traced or posterized in photoshop or something like it's 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 bizarre it doesn't look like you have any control over what's going on you know 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like when I when I saw it at first, I was like, I don't understand what type of game this is. Like, it must be a, yeah, it must be like a Telltale or something. But then you see that, uh, yeah, it's a branching path game, so it is like a like a visual novel, yeah. and it has multiplayer. So that means I think you vote on what to do, which, yeah, uh, you know, you could probably just do that with any str- like strategy. Or or any yeah. storybook game, you know, you just get into a Discord call and do that. Yeah. Anyway, this game looked really cool. Na- Naraka Blade Point. Uh, I was disappointed. I don't think this is a single player game. No, and so I would want this to be single player. I was not very interested in this game. I I I had the opposite opinion of you. I was not interested in this game at all until somebody in the chat said this was a 60 player battle royale. And then I was like, "Oh right. shit, this might be really cool then." Cuz it's a uh, it's like a ninja game. Uh yeah. so so it's a it's a melee focused battle royale game. I'm kind I'm kind of yes. I'm kind of into it. I mean, and I'm sure that would be cool to play. I just would rather have a a single player game because I hate people and I don't want to talk to them and I don't want to be beaten by anybody. Apparently, this has been out. Uh, it's just now coming to Xbox. Yeah. Is it a Game Pass thing? Uh, yes, Game Pass. All right, uh, that's sick. I'll, I will give it a shot. It's coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, it's coming out June 23rd. That's pretty sick. Yes. Uh, made by NetEase Montreal. Uh, anyway. Next is Peniment. It's Obsidian Entertainment's next game, and it'll be out in November. Uh, not interested in this one at all. This game looks really ugly. It looks like a Flash yeah. game. I mean, I get they're trying to go for like a particular art style, like that, like 16th century, like painting art style, but it just doesn't. Yeah, like you said, it looks like a Flash game, and those game and and that art style is ugly. <laughs> they didn't know how to draw back then. <laughs> Do you remember that one game? It, it's like it was like an indie game, but it like gained a lot of traction because the graphics look like uh, ancient Greece pottery. Ancient Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like a, a Acropolis or something. When Chat, is... help me out here. But that's a Greek restaurant. Like that... <laughs> <laughs> when did it come out? That's the vibe I'm getting came out a while ago it was a ps4 game i think it was um it was definitely a ps plus game i i don't i, I don't know yeah hades um, somebody a, in the chat hades, said. Yeah. it's not hades <laughs> but yeah it's trying to evoke like this weird art style from like an ancient time that like i think that might be its only selling point is what i'm trying to say right apotheon um, Apotheon. Apotheon, that's it, yes. I just typed in Greek PS4 game. Yeah, Apotheon. And oh, it looks like, like pottery, yeah? Yeah, this is like a side-scrolling action game, though. Yeah. That other game is, I don't know what. <laughs> Probably, you know, it's Obsidian, so all they make are RPGs. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, here's Ereban Shadow Legacy. I heard... Oh! Oh yeah, this is uh, so. This is another game I wasn't that interested in, and then people said it reminds them of that Tenchu game. Oh, like PS2. Okay. Yeah, and I was like, oh, it's another stealth like ninja game. So this this kind of yeah. looks pretty cool. That'll be now cool. that I know that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're like, uh, it's like Tenchu, but you're fighting robots and stuff, and 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 they That's have cool. a very clear field of vision. So yeah. uh, you're stealthing around them. It looks kind of cool. Yeah. Uh you skipped over grounded yeah, on purpose. <laughs> but it's basically it's honey I shrunk the kids, but of the video game. It's been out. Oh, it's on wait, PC. Wait, wait. No, it hasn't been out. How has it not been out? It said grounded is leaving Xbox game preview in September. Oh, has it been in alpha this whole time? Is it one of those situations? Yes. It's in early access. <laughs> It's been out. Uh, yeah, it was released on Steam Early Access. It hasn't been for consoles in twenty in twenty twenty. 
It hasn't been be an alpha out on consoles. Ever. That I didn't know that. Oh, it was released on for Microsoft Windows and Xbox One in early access on July 2020. Okay. That's stupid. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not interested in that game. Okay. Uh, Diablo 4. People are very salty on Diablo right now because Immortal yeah. is 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 uh, predatory. But uh, a friend of mine is playing it, and he said, aside from that stuff, it's pretty good. <laughs> I heard people say that it's really a shame because the game is good and the yeah. touch controls are really good. It's just uh, it's got predatory microtransactions. So yeah, that's sullied the whole thing. Yeah. Why does um, this trailer have no gameplay? It's a Blizzard trailer. They never have gameplay. They just want to show off cool stuff. Like the new character class, the Necromancer. Um, also, Diablo 4 ha will have crossplay and cross-progression when it is released. Uh, expected sometime in 2023. It looked... The, the gameplay looked great. So, yeah, I don't know why uh, they're not showing me that here. Uh, sea of Thieves, I don't care. Season 7 is coming June 21st. Uh, Ravenlock is an action-packed fairy tale coming in 2023. Uh, it, it looks kind of cool. Game? Uh, it looks like a Switch game. Yeah, but uh, speaking of Switch very games, pretty. oh, okay. Uh, Cocoon. It's coming in 2023 from Annapurna Interactive, developed uh, by the gameplay designer of Limbo and Inside. There you go, another Limbo-like. There you go. Now, if you want some more Limbo or Inside, you got it right here. I That's, say, a speaking of, That's a vagina. Speaking of Switch, I say speaking of Switch because I recently watched this trailer on the Nintendo Switch YouTube channel. So uh -oh. <laughs> it'll be coming on Switch. Looks pretty good, except there's a lot yeah. of insect looking things. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know if this is Oolong or Wolong. Wolong Final, Final Dynasty is a dark fantasy set in the later Han Dynasty from Teen Ninja coming to Game Pass on day one. This is basically another Souls-like game from Team Ninja, except it's taking place in China. Yeah, it looks like a Team Ninja game. Cool. Yeah. Did they do Neo? Yes. Yeah, it looks like Neo. This is a big deal. Persona all uh, 3, 4, and 5. Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royale are all coming to Xbox and Windows PC. Uh, Royal will come October 21st, and the other two games coming later... Uh, Later this year, all three games will be a part of Game Pass. That's great. And I also think this means that they will be in the next Nintendo Direct. Uh, that, that, that we'll get yeah. a f at least five in, in, the, in the next Nintendo Direct. Uh, yeah. But being on Game Pass is great. Uh, mm -hmm. I, people are actually upset that this left, that, 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 that it's not on PlayStation. They thought this was a PlayStation exclusive. That They're nope. mad that it moved over to Xbox. Speaking of being mad that a PlayStation exclusive moved over to Xbox, Hideo Kojima announced his next game will be in collaboration with Xbox Game Studios. Um, neither Kojima nor Microsoft shared any more details other than that. Um, and it, they said it's going to be a completely new game. That's great. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Uh, but yeah, he basically didn't do much. <laughs> yeah, he basically said, I'm working with Xbox. I'm making a game I've always wanted to make. So that'll be interesting Good. to see what has he always wanted to make. Um, and he also had to come out and clarify that he's still working with Sony on other stuff. Mm -hmm. Why that matters to people, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and lastly, Starfield. Uh, yes, the extended gameplay trailer. Uh, Todd Howard came out and talked about his ambition for the project. Uh, there are going to be a thousand planets. In so this I'm, I'm going to walk you through my my how i processed this trailer i was watching it and the, my immediate reaction was this is just no man's sky because he just comes <laughs> out of the ship and he's and he's mining immediately yeah and i'm like okay that's no man's sky there's like all these crazy critters and stuff and the and the environment looks the way it does and i'm like this is freaking no man's sky and there's like all environmental hazards and stuff. I'm like, this is freaking no man's sky and then you hear that there's a thousand worlds and i'm like okay well obviously that's like no man's sky and yeah. then he pulls out a gun and shoots people. And I'm like, all right, never mind. <laughs> that actually looks sick. Because Bethesda games, uh, I mean, like like the, the, you know, like 
the the Elder Scrolls and the and, and Fallout, specifically yeah. Fallout, they don't have good shooting. So if this game has good shooting, then I might actually enjoy it. Right. Uh, it just looks like a triple A No Man's Sky. Yeah. Uh, now the fact that it has a thousand worlds, I now No Man's Sky had a lot more than that, but uh, that was procedurally generated. I think what's happening here is they generated all of the worlds already. Yeah. And then, and then you just have the aftermath. So yeah. like it's the the generation has been done already. They just probably tweaked a bunch of stuff after the fact. Um, I can't imagine there's going to be much variety in a thousand different planets. Like there's there's got to right. be some repeats. It's got to get monotonous. Th there, there comes a point when your game is too big and there's too much. And I feel like a yeah. thousand planets is that point. Yeah. That, that's like, that's ridiculous. I know there are people who are going to play it and like play it, get to all 1000 planets, but not me. <laughs> a lot of people also complained that the AI looked bad. Like the enemies, yeah. the enemy AI looked bad. It probably does. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's just, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't, as long as the game is fun, I don't really care. Yeah. But, uh, I would like it a little more if it was multiplayer. And I don't think I it is. You say that, um, but the two Bethesda online games, nobody likes. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't have faith that Bethesda would do a good job if they made this multiplayer, yeah. but I still want it to be multiplayer. Like, 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 that's not an excuse, you know? Like, I want it to be good and also multiplayer. Right, <laughs> right. right. Um. So I don't know. I mean, it looks it looks like I would have more fun with this than I did with something like No Man's Sky, right? Um, and also Fallout. I didn't. I was not a big fan of Fallout, right? Now he's got a jetpack. I'm getting some freaking Mass Effect vibes. <laughs> uh, it looks it looks. Yeah. I'm, I honestly, I came out of that trailer more excited for Starfield than I originally thought I would be. So I yeah. think it look. I think it looks pretty good. I, I'm a little skeptical because it, it's probably going to be a little broken when it comes out. I think right. it will be delayed again and also broken when it comes out. That's what I think. Right. <laughs> All right. So that was the Xbox slash Bethesda showcase. Uh, overall, I think there was a lot of great stuff. It's just, again, I'm jaded because they all kind of look the same. <laughs> yeah. They look like games we've had already. So, yeah. More or I'm not, less. I'm not too crazy about it. But, you know, we've had E3s that were just as lackluster. So, yeah. Like, this is just how it goes sometimes. I think the most exciting thing is that all of it, this stuff is, is Game Pass and it's coming within the next 12 months. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. anyway, uh, we also have to touch on Capcom real quick. Yes. Uh, real quick, they didn't really announce much. Uh, they showed off a new trailer for Monster Hunter Rise expansion, Sunbreak, coming June 30th. Mm -hmm. uh, and there will be a Sunbreak demo on PC and Switch on June 14th. Uh, that's today, if you want to try it. Oh, shit. Uh, there was brief mention of Street Fighter VI. Uh, Capcom showed off a trailer for the Street Fighter Fighting Collection coming out June 24th. And a trailer for a Capcom Arcade Second Stadium coming July 22nd. Uh, we got more Street Fighter stuff at the PlayStation State of Play thing. So yes, we knew about uh, this that was already. basically this was basically like a reminder that they're doing Street Fighter Six. Um, but they did show off the new collections that they're doing, uh, the fight, the Capcom Fighting Collection, and the second arcade collection. On screen right now, I'm showing the uh, the the dinosaur horde game. Uh, yes, Ex uh, Exo Primal. Exo Primal co-op action game where you fight dinosaurs. <laughs> this was in a state of play, and I thought it looked kind of good. Now I'm watching it, uh, and I think it looks okay. But uh, it looks like it looks like Earth Defense Force with dinosaurs. I'm kind of keeping my eye on this one. Yeah, I I just wish they would have done. Dino Crisis instead, you know? Yeah, I know. They they they're completely ignoring Dino Crisis. Yeah. Uh they should they do that in the off... Resident Evil engine. 
Exactly. Oh my God. It would be so good. It would be so good. No, seriously. That would Remake be great. Dino Crisis 1 and 2 in the Resident Evil engine? Yeah. Like they did Resident Evil 2? Fuck, man. Anyway, uh, they showed off a message about Dragon's Dogma, which fans are desperate to see a sequel to. Uh, they're doing something for the 10th, 10 year anniversary. Uh, and then they talked about the uh, long awaited DLC for Resident Evil Village. Uh, three main parts. The Shadow of Rose story DLC, where you play as Ethan Winter's daughter as a 16-year-old. Uh, you also get a new mercenaries mode, including you can play as Lady Dimitrisk. So, Ooh. all you perverts out there, congratulations, you win. Uh, and, this is exciting, you can now play the main campaign in third person. And all this will come out October 28th. Whoa. That'll yeah, that is cool, actually that is actually really cool <laughs> to be able to play like, it in third person. So I like I love Resident Evil Seven. I haven't played eight yet, but I love Resident Evil Seven. I feel like that game could have benefited from a third person camera, mm -hmm. and I'm excited to see it come to Village. So uh, when I eventually do get this game and play this game, I will be, you know, I'll try it in first person, but I think I'll primarily be playing it in third person. Well, okay, very cool. Yeah. Uh, they also showed off just a little bit more of Resident Evil 4. Um, still not doing a lot to change my mind about how I feel about the game, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to play it. Uh, and they announced that uh, the next generation updates for Resident Evil 7 and the RE2 and RE3 remake are available now. Very cool. Yes. Uh, so that's everything that's been announced so far for the... So uh, far. For the Summer Games Fest or E3 season. Yes, I think it's been okay. We got some okay yeah. announcements. Nothing got crazy. Some good stuff, some best. I yeah, I feel like the the summer announcements uh, aren't like incredible unless we get uh, a whole new console generation. <laughs> Otherwise, the announcements are like, all right, they're fine. Well, I mean, the summer now the E three announcements supposed to be the big announcements for the year, mm -hmm. and I feel like what we saw was good, but there's nothing like earth shattering you know yeah. we didn't get like the one or two games that would have completely you know changed you know the landscape of gaming like we didn't get the games that everyone's gonna go out and get this year what well, what would be earth shattering what's something that you would like that would have been earth shadowing so uh, something cool. something that uh liam said the curse to golf guy was like these like when there's new games announced that could be a game that could be the next earth shattering thing. You just no, don't know, it. you know, because it's people are looking for IPs that they're familiar with. I and, think that's what it is. I think that's yeah. what the problem is. Yeah. You know, like we didn't get, you know, a, a release date for Spider Man 2, or we didn't get like, uh, we didn't get the Banjo Kazooie uh, remake that was rumored right. to be, you know, coming and things like that. So uh, yeah, heavy think, in the chat says Metal Gear remake from Kojima. I would that yeah. would be insane. Yeah, that'd be a crazy earth shattering thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know what Capcom could have shown in a Capcom showcase. <laughs> um, a new Mega Man would have blown my socks off. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, a Dino Crisis in the style of Resident Evil remake that would have been. We already have Halo. Uh, yeah. Golden Eye was missing. Yeah, that was rumored. Unless it's going to be in the uh, rumored Nintendo Direct that's coming. Also, Perfect Dark. I'm disappointed yeah, we haven't game, heard about that in a while. That game's been having some development issues, though. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we're going to hear about that game for a long time. Somehow I'm not surprised. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it's been a while. Let's read some notifications here, like... Yeah. Akmeister with 11 months. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Mecha Dragon with 500 bit, uh, bits. Breaking news, Will, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! Kazuki Taka Takahashi uh, wrote a Marvel superhero book. Which one? Now I got to go looking. Is it Moon Knight? Yes. Uh, Richie to fly with eight months. Hey, how's it going? Happy eight months, I guess. Well, thank you, Richie. Thank uh you. Khalil Jama with 18 months. Biggest difference I see from the Last of Us remake is the character models. Look at Naughty Dog's latest tweet if you want a good example. I will look at that. But yeah, no, I did I did see the character models like their eyes are different. And that's yeah. basically it. 
Uh, and we also have Picky Gamer, thanks for the 17 months, and Scott the Sloth with the 200 bits. The worst thing about Summer Games Fest is Jeff tries to blow up 30 minutes of announcements into two hours with a bunch of filler garbage. Yeah. Uh, don't talk badly about our friend Jeff, okay? Well, why was The Rock there? <laughs> The Rock just showed up in his gym talking about his energy drink, Black Adam, and, you know, how cool he is, you know? You see the character models are different, but honestly, I think that they both are fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm cool with both of them. Yeah, I mean, the older character models could have passed for this generation. They really could have. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Know, uh notably so we got sony we got xbox yeah. we got capcom <laughs> <laughs> we're missing uh missing nintendo here what happened yes. with them where are they at well uh a lot of people have been rumoring and speculating about when a nintendo direct would happen uh basically everybody said it was going to be this week uh, and now all of a sudden, everybody says that that's wrong. And you know why they're saying that? It's because we're at the week and we haven't heard anything. So now all of a sudden, yeah. everybody's changing the goalposts and moving it. Um, but the original rumor was the 15th or the 16th, uh, which I think is... I don't think that's a rumor that anybody knows any information. I think that's them looking at past years yeah. and just copying and pasting. Because in the last f- five years... Four of them have been the 14th, 15th, and 16th. Uh, 2020, I think, was the 23rd. Right. So it, 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 that would be next week. Um, now everybody's saying it's the 29th. Uh, this is an article from Nintendo Life, uh, and it says, With the Summer Game Fest now in full swing, Rumors of a Nintendo Direct taking place during the month of June continue to gain traction with no word uh, from the Big N itself regarding an upcoming showcase. We're unfortunately left to scrounge around for every scrap of information we could possibly find. Thankfully, the latest rumor comes from a rather credible source and points to Nintendo Direct occurring on Wednesday, June 29th. That's a little over two weeks away. It comes courtesy of Alana Pierce former games journalists for the likes of IGN and Rooster Teeth, and now writer for Sony Santa Monica, who mentioned the date at the end of a live stream during which she reacted to the latest Xbox and Bethesda games showcase. Uh, You can check the video yourself right here. I haven't actually seen that video. I will watch it later. Uh, And she said, in quotes, this article is quoting her. It says, is there a Nintendo Direct announced? No, but I believe that there is a Nintendo Direct coming on the 29th. I don't know that that's been announced. You heard it here first. Let me check. I have it written down. 29th. Yeah, June 29th. Nintendo Direct. It's not technically a leak because Nintendo didn't tell me, which is how I make that call. But I'm not leaking anything that's in it, which I think is shitty. Oh, I guess it would be shitty for her to leak what's in it. Yeah. I, 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 we talked about this on the Nintendo podcast, which will come out on Thursday, but, uh, I, I, I it's a little weak. Like, all right. So they call these people like industry insiders. And Alana Pierce, you know, was a journalist, but now yeah. she's in the industry. So she's like right. legitimately an industry insider. <laughs> um, I'm I'm a little worried like how she knew this like what if like one of her developer friends like told her it looked like she like apparently it sounds like she looked at her phone and was like yeah no that's what I heard was the 29th yeah. like how though like are you going to get somebody in trouble like, yeah. like what if somebody's like hey man my game's coming out it, 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 we're announcing it uh, on the next nintendo direct oh when's that oh the 29th yeah and now that person's gonna get in trouble because you just yeah blurted it out it, it, it's very weird that she would just say it you know yeah like huh. but i mean i don't then, know yeah. but but a lot of people are are, are running with that uh but since yeah. since she you know leaked it now everybody's coming out and saying yeah that's the day 
uh, yeah. like direct feed games who, who is nate on the spawn cast says uh the information is accurate the window of airing is either june 28th or june 29th it may depend on time zone slash regional location it was never planned for the coming week which is this week it's been slated for late june for many many weeks this is not the result of a delay it's as planned uh now this is against a rumor that uh everybody was saying was going to be this week and it was perpetuated by a uh, leaker uh samus hunter i think on twitter mm -hmm. uh they said that it would it would happen on the 15th so now i guess we'll wait until the 29th the 29th makes yeah. sense um yeah i feel like it makes more sense for nintendo to not do it during e3 week you know they yeah. do it like on their own terms because they're nintendo well, they'll have more eyes on them. And also, uh, in 2020, they were a week late. They were a week after they normally would have been. So I, I figured, yes. you know, they're probably going to be a little late this time also. Uh, mm -hmm. But two weeks late uh, is weird. But uh, Nate's saying it's it's not late. It's as it was always planned. Uh, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think any of these people know anything. I think that uh, we're all just guessing. And 29 yeah. sounds like a good day. It sounds like a good day to me because it's after I get back from too many games and I'll have time to talk about the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except it's not that good because it's the day after uh, uh, Wolf Den podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. As is their tradition of not doing it at a convenient time for us. <laughs> right. Uh, but it'll be just in time for a Nintendo podcast, so. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, if you're interested in Nintendo's summer announcements, it'll happen probably at the end of the month. But also, nobody knows. They could spring it up on us. Oh, I also want to mention uh, one of the top posts on r slash Nintendo was, was this poor guy. <laughs> Who's, it, it, Nintendo Direct, June 15th leaks about to be proven or disproven. Uh, at the time that I screenshotted it, it was nine hours ago this was posted, and then it uh -huh. said, uh, if the June 15th Nintendo Direct leak is true, we should see the announcer from Nintendo about to release on in, on Twitter in the next one to two hours. So it was already pr disproven. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, N Nintendo subreddit is going wild right now, trying to figure out when the hell yeah. this Direct is. I feel like you could just post in the Nintendo subreddit and be like, Yo, wild card! Nintendo's gonna do a direct now. <laughs> everyone go to yeah. Right. Everyone will believe it. Uh, anyway, fries and a shake. Thanks for the seven months. No, thank you. Oh, damn it! <laughs> she got me. <laughs> um. All right, Sonic Frontiers. Uh, more, more great news. Yeah, Sonic Frontiers. Sonic Frontiers won't be delayed as a result of fan feedback, insists Sonic Team's boss. Uh, Takeshi Izuka says the public don't understand the new format <laughs> yet. So the game's not the problem. You're the problem. Uh, there are no plans to delay Sonic Frontiers following its recent gameplay reveal. Uh, hashtag delay Sonic Frontiers was briefly trending on Twitter earlier this month after many Sonic fans took the social media platform to vent their disappointment over the first video shown, uh, showing the game in action. Part of an upcoming VGC interview, um, Takashi Izuka was asked what he thought of the mixed reactions to the gameplay footage. Uh, it's not really that surprising, Izuka replied. Uh, we do realize everyone is just kind of reacting to the videos that they saw because they don't understand what this new gameplay is. They're, they're kind of comparing it to other games that they already know. Uh, and then it, it goes into a different story about... Uh, Sonic Adventure 3 was not part of uh, their plan. They weren't going to do Sonic Adventure 3. They were going to do this game instead. I think he's completely right, but... Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's just not an excuse. <laughs> like, 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 yeah, people don't know what this game is going to be like. No, people are confused that what, what an open zone means. Like people yeah. are confused and we are waiting for the game to come out to figure out what the hell an open zone game is. And yeah, people are comparing it to other games because that's what we have to go off of. It 
doesn't mean the people are wrong and it doesn't mean that he's wrong. You know what I mean? Like, like he's just stating what's happening. He's just saying it as if like, uh, like, oh, they'll know and it'll be great. Yeah. But we don't know if it's going to be great. I mean, we are so far like we, the public, all we're seeing is what Sega wants us to see. Like the gameplay videos that are being put out, like are very controlled, uh, very specifically designed to be previewed. For all we know, the final game could be different. Uh, it could actually be very fun to control and play. Um, but I think, you know, if you're not making a good first impression, that's something to, I think, to consider. Right. Because if people are concerned about your game, that's not going to reflect well when it comes time for launch. Yeah, I don't. I think he's salty that people aren't understanding yeah. his vision. But like, yeah, I don't think you can expect people to. I think that you have to. I mean, just wait for the game to come out, and hopefully, people will like it. Yeah. He uh, probably just didn't want to be like, "Look, we're trying, damn it." <laughs> <laughs> or like, you'll get it when the game comes out. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, tell me about this. Agent 64 situation. Uh, gladly. Uh, once the page loads. New retro first-person shooter is the GoldenEye 64 sequel you've always wanted. Oh. Although rumors uh, have recently been inescapable about the remaster of Rare's landmark N64 shooter, GoldenEye 007, is coming soon. As of yet, there have been no official announcements. Thankfully... Uh, you don't have to wait for a remaster of GoldenEye to play that kind of game again. A new Steam shooter, Age of 64, Spies Never Die, is basically the answer to the question, what would have happened if the team who made GoldenEye on N64 were given modern tools and tech? The result is a fun retro shooter that feels a different from most other current boomer shooters out there. Uh, for those who have not... For those who have been waiting for news of a GoldenEye remaster, this year's not E3 festivities were supposed to be uh, where we finally got news about the long way to port. However, that didn't happen. Uh, it's still just a rumor. Regardless, the lack of GoldenEye uh, Double Seven re-release is a shame. Uh, many folks who grew up playing and loving that game and Rare's other classic N64 shooter, Perfect Dark, who are generally missed uh, level-based shooters with various objectives and fast-paced gunplay, so to those who love the type of console shooter, um, I'd recommend loading up Steam and downloading the new demo for Agent 64 Spies Never Die, an upcoming indie shooter that doesn't hide that it's uh, trying to be, doesn't hide what it's trying to be at all. This is a game built from the ground up in Unity to recreate that feeling of playing an N64 era shooter. Uh, technically, this isn't the first demo for Agent 64 to be released. However, the last one that came out in 2021 uh, was a bit too rough around the edges. This new demo is impressive, showcasing just how far the devs have progressed since the last outing. Uh, while the narrative is a bit light in the demo, the reason uh, to play Agent 64 is that here. Uh, you feel it in the way the game perfectly recaptures that distinctive auto-aim-powered uh, feel of those N64 classics. It's the kind of shooter that you can play with a mouse and keyboard, but after replaying a demo a few times, I much prefer a controller as the sticks and triggers feel better suited for this style of action. The demo is 196 megabytes. I'm downloading it now. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, this game looks hella fun. Yeah, this I looks great. This comes to a console I own. Yeah, this actually looks like Goldeneye. It looks freaking awesome. And it's like if you listen to like the music, it sounds like Goldeneye too. They got like everything like just right. Yeah, yeah. It it it, lo it looks really freaking cool. <laughs> uh i'm gonna play it it looks it looks good i yeah. hope uh yeah I'll, I'll put it on my steam deck hopefully it works on that uh the game even has some nice visual settings that can make it look less uh pretty and even uh a nice looking crt filter complete with sque screen warping so you can relive those classic nights of staying up too late while playing goldeneye on some shitty old tv with your siblings and friends i was gonna say like the text and like ui elements look like they need to be like uh derezzed or something <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, hey, a, a, a CRT filter would fix that. Mm -hmm. That looks great. Uh, yeah. I thought I thought this was going to be a story about how they're re-releasing Goldeneye without the James Bond license. <laughs> no, it's a brand new thing. Which uh, I think it's better. I'm still down. Yeah. Oh, that was the last story. That was all we had. Yeah. 
There we go. Wow. We're done. Yay. We're done. Yay. Uh, I was not prepared. I don't have a tweet of the week. Oh, that's it. Cancel the show. Good night, everybody. Tune in next week. When we'll have good a much night, better Wolf Den podcast. Good. Have a good night, guys. Uh, anyway, uh, I guess we'll talk to you people until I find a tweet of the week. <laughs> yeah. We will start with the people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on our YouTube channel. Oh, YouTube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. Jokes on you, idiots. I found a tweet of the week, baby. Was that quick? We got a tweet of the week for you. Wow. Check this Make shit it out, good. you dummy. It's Sonic on his hands and knees praying, and it says, Thank you, God, for not making me a crypto guy. <laughs> Let's go, baby. That is good. That was by Ashley Jupiter. I, I saw it was on Instagram. It's Bugs Bunny also. Uh, Prague saying, thank you, God, for not making me into feet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, last week's Wolf Den La podcast. Last week's Wolf Den podcast. Uh, Richie Anthony says, are you fucking kidding me right now? Uh, that is the tone of a man who has been done with another man's shit for over 30 <laughs> years and finally let it out. <laughs> it's true. Oh, yeah. You were That's really bad last week with me trying to tell you things and then you asking me two seconds later what I just said. Uh, it's the dementia, Will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Bat Mabel says, the problem is every Sonic game is experimenting something. Every uh, They're all completely different things. This means that when something is not quite good, which is often but has a nice idea behind it. They never explore it to perf to perfect the idea as the next game will be a completely different beast with different positive and negative points. Uh, they're not wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel that is true. Like that was a big criticism of Sonic games where like they'll do something right. And then instead of like extrapolating on it for the next game, they'll do something completely different. Right. And because like, you know, we had Sonic Unleashed, which had a good, uh, you know, of course, the classic, the good daytime levels with the bad nighttime levels. So then they like turned it into Sonic Colors, but that still did different things with the wisps and the level designs. And then they did Sonic Generations, which also had the the track layout from Sonic Colors, but also like was a, was like the side scrolling stuff. And then Sonic Lost Worlds was completely different because it was like a Mario Galaxy style game. And then uh, Frontiers, which was I don't still don't really know what that was supposed to be. And now uh no sorry, forces, I don't really know what that's supposed to be. And now we're up to frontiers, which is open world. I think uh companies normally when they wanna uh, experiment, they release a different like a like a completely different smaller side game or whatever with a mechanic that they're interested in. And then mm -hmm. when that works out, uh they implement it in a mainline game. Yeah. And and that's not what they're doing with Sonic at all. Yeah. <laughs> they're just putting all their, they're just throwing all everything they got into Sonic and, and it's not working out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Nintendo, I mean, they have gimmicks and stuff. You got flood, you got Cappy yeah. and stuff like that in their mainline games, but, uh, they know how to polish a game. So, especially cause like, you know the core of those games is so so solid. You could build off of those game to game. The Sonic games, like, yeah, like once they have a solid core, they don't build on it. They just do something different. Mm -hmm. We got a comment from William Wolf, who is our oh father, god, who says the Wolf Den dad bronze as well. <laughs> He's not wrong. No. He, he does bronze yeah, he, well. He does. <laughs> well, who told you to have pasty white sons? Yeah, Dad? it's your fault. What happened? Yeah. The Jesus didn't work out. What happened? Yeah. Haley Rabbit says, can Wolf Dad get his own pod? You don't, you don't want that. Yeah, you wouldn't want that. Just stick a mic on him for a day. Yeah, uh, well, or go on YouTube and look up uh, Grandpa Abe Simpson rants. Very <laughs> similar. Bav Bavesh uh, 
Kubnani says, Bob, thanks for introducing me to Curse to Golf. Can't wait for it to come out. What other games do you play on your Steam Deck or PC? The only other game that I really tried the other day was Kunai. I got it for like two bucks. Uh, and it's really good. It's a good Steam Deck game. Nice. Nice, if, nice. If, if you... I frequently talk about platformers and a lot of the times they're like difficult or hard, like like the messenger or or, or Celeste or uh uh Cyber Shadow. But mm -hmm. Kunai is very approachable. Uh so I would recommend it if you're interested in platformers or you hear me talk about platformers and you want something that's maybe a little more approachable. But it's right. like seventeen dollars right now. I got it for two, so don't pay too much money for it. Uh, anyway, we got L Comanche who says I was excited for Sonic Frontiers on the very first trailer that showed a little gameplay, but since the terrain and combat trailers, I have lost a ton of hope. I am very deflated. Yeah, it's uh, that's the Sonic cycle. You get excited, and then. Every little bit, like it's less and less and less until you are unexcited, and then they announce the next game, and you're right back to being excited again. I mean, you have to, you have to expect that the Sonic team is gonna fuck some things up. Like they, they like they have not yeah. had a good track record. We're all really rooting for them, but yeah. uh, we're all also very skeptical because their their uh, history has not been great. Yeah. Uh, anyway, now we're in the chat chat. Uh, yes. Winter Chimp says, is it me or is Nintendo the Kanye West of video game publishers? You're going to need to elaborate. I have no yeah. idea what you mean by that. Will, what, are that you they like, go ahead. I was going to say like, do they like just shout at you for like not recognizing their genius? <laughs> What's a developer that does that? Not, I was gonna say Hideki Kamiya, but like he doesn't really shout at you for not recognizing his genius. He just shouts at you for being an idiot and bothering yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, just leave, oh, Mecha, just leave him alone. Mecha Dragon says the Fez guy, so that's kind of true. True. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Gust Cork says the Sonic devs just did. So yeah, okay, yeah, that works out. Um, good point. Diet, whatever his name is. Will, are you excited for the first issue, final issue of Batman and Catwoman? Yes, because that means I can uh, read it all collected because Tom King's Batman run has been uh, best read when all at once, not issue to issue. So I am excited for it because now it means I can read it. George McFarlane says Nintendo benefits in that they aren't fully focused on graphics for a lot of their games. Their games have a lot of personality on their own. Yes. Uh, yeah, they're very good at making the art style work no matter the graphical limitations. So, mm -hmm. But like, all that means is that every other developer that's focusing too hard on graphics should ease it up a little bit. Like I yeah. understand for games like Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, you know, they the graphics matter a lot, but like art style is way more important. If you can get a nice art style yeah. uh and 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 focus on the the core mechanics and make those fun, you're going to have a great game. Yeah. But boy, but boy, but boy says, "Do you oh, think boy. Kojima's next game will also be Strand style?" <laughs> Unfortunately, I no. I don't think so. I saw something like they were they were pulling in, uh, from interviews from like Kojima like from years and years ago. He was talking about something he was calling like a raw game, and I don't really understand what that is. I don't either. But I feel like whatever a raw game might be, this might be what he's talking about. I feel like Kojima learns an English word and he goes, "That sounds fucking awesome." Yeah, that, I'm using that like transference. Yeah, he's like that's Oh, so where you're transferring your save file between th he's like, yeah, transfer. That's a good word. Transfer. Yeah, but let's put it in in, in Metal Gear transference. Uh, Sonic games yeah. are raw games. They need more time in the oven. 
<laughs> Silent Mongoose. That was good. That's good, yeah. Uh, De- Devin Gaming says, what makes gameplay videos stand out anymore now that everyone streams? Or should people just do short reviews? Uh, nothing makes gameplay videos stand out anymore. Everything's been done yeah. already. <laughs> the yeah. the o- I mean, if you're incredible at a game, if you're speed running that game, or if you're just fucking hysterical. But unfortunately, yeah. uh, it's impo- it's like impossible to stand out anymore. Uh, so reviews are good. Uh, people are always mm-hmm. searching for reviews and stuff and, and for different takes on... I mean, when we started making YouTube videos, we always tried to find like a nugget. Uh, we ne- we didn't try to just do reviews. We tried to find like a little a little nugget that we can add to the conversation. Like, uh, yeah. I don't know, like... Uh, Just a unique take on so like don't just do a review. A review. Talk about something very specific yeah. of, of the yeah. game or in the game. Uh, did any of you bros got the new PlayStation Plus subscription? Uh, I'm gonna buy it right now. I forgot to mention that. I was yeah. gonna say that in the, in the in the podcast, but uh, the new PlayStation Plus premium subscription came out yesterday. Yes. Uh. Yeah, yesterday. Uh, my boss was asking me if he should get it. And I said yes. And I told him he should play the Spider-Man games and Red Dead. My next video is going to be ranking all of the subscription services. Uh, so I'm going to play it tonight, probably. So I'll I'll let you know how it goes in go. a YouTube video on YouTube.com slash Uh so are we back to doing extremes to go viral now that everyone kind of does the same thing? Uh, it depends on what the extreme is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, don't just don't show your it. private part. <laughs> yes. Don't just be like, this thing sucks. Yeah. If you don't actually think that it sucks. Yeah. Do you guys think the new PlayStation Plus is good? It seems very good. It seems like it's got a lot of good content in it. So. I've heard it is good. It's um kind of buggy and like the UI like needs some work, but um I mean what it offers like works. So right. Everything's uh NTSC, right? Is yes. We uh yeah, everything's NTSC and it runs in the proper frame rate in North America, so you're good. What what if you, we talked about this already, but what if it's uh what if you're in Europe? Is it still NTSC? You don't have a choice? I think so. Well, nowadays everything's standardized, and I think it's based on the NTSC format. Okay. So I don't think it would matter. Well, it mat- I mean, older games had some wacky shit, you know? Right, right. But I think if they upload the NTSC version in the PAL region, I think uh, it'll it'll run just fine mm-hmm. on a in that area. And if anything, I, it'll run better because it'll be this full sixty frames a second. I just don't know if that breaks any, uh, if if it makes a difference for any PlayStation games. I know it makes a difference for some right. Super Nintendo games. I don't know if it makes a difference for any PlayStation games. Right. Um, like smashing my OLED Switch trick on words. It's the Super Smash game, but then end it with legitimately smashing it. So it's clickbait. All right, now you're getting crazy. Now you're getting wild. Yeah. Um. Rumor Emily Rogers talks about the new Fire Emblem game for Switch. Okay. okay. <laughs> we didn't talk about Fire the Emblem game. We didn't talk about the wholesome direct. Uh, there wasn't really anything crazy in it, but it did look really nice. There was a lot of nice stuff in it. It was it was like an hour and a half long, and there were a fuck ton of games in it. Um, really. Yeah, there was some cool stuff in it though, but that's another thing. Like all these like conferences are like so long. Like, I don't have yeah. time for this stuff. The Xbox conference was an hour and a half. I watched an Engadget summary in twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, I think we're done. All right, I think that's it, guys. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. That, 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 that. 
I, I, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for prepared. watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also on audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Um, hmm. Who do we raid? Um. I feel like it's like early. We're like four minutes early right now. We got through the whole show. Wow. I can't believe it. I might be able to go to, go to bed at a reasonable time. <laughs> um. Hmm. Maybe I'll throw you guys a wild card. Go say hi to Beta64. Uh, I don't think I've ever Ooh. rated him before. <laughs> uh, Will plays Val with the boys when? <laughs> You want to play Valorant, Will? <laughs> when you are you gonna take uh, my PC? <laughs> I might have to because I might. I really want to play uh, Gotham Knights, and I really want to play Resident Evil Four. I did almost buy because Target had a Series S, and if you buy a Series S, it came with Halo Infinite for free. Oh damn! I almost, oh well, that's I a free game. It's Game Pass. Oh, you don't have Game Pass. I know. Yeah. So, but uh, we'll we'll, we'll work something out. Uh. Mr. Beating them up. So we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. I'll see you all later. Say hi to Beta64. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Wow, that cut you off real quick. Uh